Hey everyone, it's Kyle, Azor Hype. Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 2, A Night of the Seven Kingdoms, was one of the best, if not the best, episode of the series. There was great dialogue, truly heartfelt moments, and an episode where no deaths were featured. We're going to break it down in this Hype Season 8 Episode 2 breakdown. So, let's jump into the video. We start off the episode with a very emotional cold open to Jamie Lannister's trial in Winterfell. I love the transition from the end of the last episode with the intense stare between the three-eyed raven Bran Stark and Jaime Lannister to now the mother of dragons Daenerys Targaryen and Jaime Lannister. Daenerys wasted no time in letting Jaime know how she felt about what Jaime did to her father. But I love the fact that Jaime said he wouldn't change a thing and he did it for his family during a time of war. We know that Jamie's core values are rooted in honor for the things that he loves. And of course, we had to have Bran step up and say the things we do for love. Since Bran is the Three-Eyed Raven, it makes sense that he said we because the Three-Eyed Raven doesn't make decisions based on emotion. But I find it very interesting and perhaps see this as foreshadowing that the realms of men banding together for survival during his darkest hour could prevail. Everyone's acting was truly on point in this scene, especially Sophie Turner and Gwendolyn Christie. I love the fact that in this moment, Sansa took some time to truly appreciate and think about what Brienne was stating about Jaime, not just considering her own feelings on the matter. This must have been incredibly difficult for Sansa because Jaime Lannister did play a huge role against the Starks when they were at war. But this situation showcased not only Sansa's maturity, but her ability to grow and move on as a person. For Brienne of Tarth to step up in this moment putting everything on the line for Jaime as Jaime once did for her was truly heartwarming, setting up a major moment for later on in the episode. The chemistry between Jaime and Brienne in this scene was amazing and has been for many seasons, especially since the Bass scene in Harrenhal where Jaime tells a story about why he killed the Mad King. Jamie and Brienne have been saving each other since the moment they've met. They've also been teaching one another as well. It was interesting that Jaime used Brienne's words from their conversation in the Dragon Pit. When he looks back at Brienne, it's as if he's making the point of saying Brienne was right, and he hasn't forgotten, and he's come to honor his word. When Brienne makes that realization, she knows that she has to step up and vouch for Jaime. It would be remiss to skip the result of Jaime's trial because it is a strong setup for how Daenerys, Sansa, and Jon will interact later. Once Brienne vouches for Jaime, Sansa changes her mind about him, and Danny seems unsatisfied with that look towards Jon. The Warden of the North, Jon Snow, doesn't even look at Danny when he seconds Sansa's decision. Daenerys feels outnumbered in this situation and possibly even powerless, and has no choice but to let Jaime go. Sansa leaves first with Jon following after, but Danny goes in a different direction. These subtle movements could hint at what's to come in the future. The scene between Bran and Jamie was a very interesting one where Jamie apologizes for doing what he did to Bran, which is a stark contrast from what we saw during his mock trial. He did state that he would do everything over again because their families were at war. However, I did feel that Jamie was genuine in what he said to Bran in this moment, and Bran, I believe, does see Jamie's transformation as a person. There is such an interesting connection between these two characters that can't be ignored. And since Jaime enabled Bran to become the Three-Eyed Raven, perhaps Bran will give Jaime one last push towards redemption as well. Bran did say to Jaime why he didn't reveal that he pushed him from the tower, and that's because he won't be able to help them in the War for Dawn if he let anyone murder him. Bran can see the future and is playing a different level of chess than everyone else, so it is interesting to see that he is helping all of these moving pieces move across the board. When Bran says, how do you know there is an afterwards to Jamie?" I do believe that this is foreshadowing that Jamie won't survive the series. It's always been my wish that Jamie will somehow survive the series, but since the Song of Ice and Fire features circular and spiraling arcs, we may see Jamie sacrifice himself for the realms of men again, like he once did by killing the Mad King in King's Landing. I will be doing a fully focused Jamie Lannister character analysis video this week on why he will redeem himself in the end, so be on the lookout for that later this week. Now let's talk about Daenerys Targaryen. Daenerys is one of the most important characters in the Game of Thrones, and her arc in this episode was filled with so many different emotions. As we see in the trial, she hasn't quite come to grips with the past and the downfall of House Targaryen. Her whole arc has been about her trying to get the Iron Throne so that she can break the wheel of this endless Game of Thrones. But in her scene with Sansa where she reacts negatively to Sansa inquiring about the sovereignty of the North if they were to survive the army of the dead is very interesting indeed. 
She also had a similar type of reaction with the absolutely massive reveal from John that his real name is Aegon Targaryen, the sixth of his name, the last male heir to the Iron Throne and the son of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark. The related thing to her is normal and I get where she's coming from in that she must have found it really convenient that after seven seasons of fighting for the throne, she has to hear about someone that has a more legitimate claim than her. The person that she loves has a more legitimate claim than her. And I'm not saying I love how she reacted, but I'm saying I understand some of the reasons why she is reacting the way she is. The showrunners of A Game of Thrones have talked about this central theme of power that will resonate through the whole of the season, individual character arcs, and also each episode. And we have to ask the question of how much does Daenerys love Jon and how much does she love the Iron Throne? Jon Snow, on the other hand, showed his purity in this episode, which was displayed beautifully during the trial of Jaime Lannis, where he said, we need every man we can get. Jon doesn't care about the Iron Throne, your family's last name, or if you drink giant's milk. He cares about what people stand for and if you care about the truth. Jon tells Daenerys that he wishes that this wasn't the case, that he wasn't Aegon Targaryen, and I believe he means this because this is a big deal for their relationship. But as we know, there is a bigger picture, and the end of the world might be coming soon. I think this connects beautifully to what Maester Aemon taught Jon. Duty is the death of love, and love is the death of duty, which perhaps could foreshadow a less than happy ending for Jon and Danny's relationship. But I do have hope, and we do see them nod off to each other at the end of the episode, as if they are ready to fight the army of the dead together. And let's be honest, the world needs two dragon riders that are not undead to help stop the Night King's agenda to create this endless night. This is one of the bigger reveals of the series. We finally learn about the Night King's true intentions, which is interesting because in this episode, the theme that resonates through all of our POV characters is truth. Bren reveals to everyone during their battle plan that he is marked by the Night King, which we talked about in a previous video, and that he knows where he is at all times. So to create a diversion to lure the Night King and try to kill him with dragon fire might seem like a good plan, but it might not work. Is this a good plan? Bran says this has never been tried before, and we know that Valyrian steel works on White Walker's whites and that Dragonglass works on them as well, but the Night King has Dragonglass in his chest, and we have to wonder if there is even a way to defeat him at all. One thing I also really loved about this episode is the scene between Jon, Sam, and Ed. It showed us how far these characters have come and how much they have to sacrifice and fight just to stay alive. I couldn't help but feel like Ed was foreshadowing his death in the scene where he talked about burning each other's corpses if they were to turn. And yes, we got our boy go sweet baby Jesus, thank the Lord of Light and all the old gods, the fucking new gods. We got our doggy doggy ghost back, even if he's just copy pasta in the back, everyone. This better be a setup for our ghosty boy ripping some army of the dead to shreds in episode three. Showrunners, listen, I will get a direwolf tattooed on my ass if we see a super pack of badass wolves in the Battle of Winterfell. But we know that shit is going to hit the fan in the next episode, and Arya is one of the best fighters and options left to fight the army of the dead. But I can't help but think if she's biting off more than she can chew. She might actually get her wish in the next episode by facing the personification of death in Game of Thrones in the Night King. And if they are truly to execute this trap and try to kill him, and a dragon doesn't work, then Arya is a great option. It seems that we've been dealing with a new side of Arya though since we saw her waiting on Jon and Daenerys' arrival in episode 1. Once she saw Gendry, her face lit up in a way we haven't seen in a long time. She seemed to walk the line between flirty and bossy when she presented to Gendry her plans for a weapon, but in episode 2 the stakes became higher in ways we might not have realized. I know many people were uncomfortable with Arya and Gendry being intimate. We basically watched them grow up over the course of the series. But this moment highlights something our characters are fighting for life and love, as cheesy as that may sound. The reason we are uncomfortable with the scene is also the same reason it is necessary. Arya is well aware that this could be the last night of her life, and there is one thing she hasn't experienced, which is intimacy and sex. Arya's life has been overflowing with death, destruction, and cynicism. Romance has never taken center stage in her life, and the closest she's ever come to it was when she was traveling with Gendry. So while the Arya and Gendry ship has been made real, let's not forget how and why there is a certain desperation in that scene. Desperation to find some bit of happiness and love in a world where this doesn't happen easily. In true Arya form, she makes it happen. This scene is triumphant because even in the face of possible annihilation, there is room for romance. A girl is no longer a girl. A girl is a woman named Arya Stark, and she has one more reason to fight for the living. 
Theon Greyjoy's journey has truly come full circle now by returning to Winterfell to help the Stark family keep it. The last time Theon was at Winterfell, he had just broken through the mental prison of being Reek. And he also saved Sansa from Miranda and they ran off. Now, after putting himself back together, he knows where he belongs, at the side of Ned Stark's children defending the only home he's ever known. That moment when Bran nods at Theon offering to protect him in the Godswood is a heartwarming moment. The only thing that concerns me is that this might possibly be the prelude to Theon's demise. It seems as if his character's arc will become complete in the Godswood, which echoes the book when he sees Bran's face in the Weirwood and the trees in the Godswood know his real name. And it would make sense because it does look like Samuel and Bran are outside when we brighten this photo. Theon has one of the best arcs in Game of Thrones, and I do believe if this is to be Theon's last episode, he will play a big role in what Bran's big plan is, perhaps buying enough time to distract the Night King while Jon or Daenerys land a killing blow. However, I don't think it's that simple. I could also see Theon sacrificing himself to save Sansa, since we have seen their relationship and connection grow ever since Theon saved her. I don't think the Night King will fall for this trap because of Bran's mark and also because he is a green seer like Bran as well. We have to remember when the Night King could have killed Jon and everyone else beyond the wall, he stayed to get a dragon. And he also dispels Bran's ravens when he is trying to gather information in the north. Their battle plan has a major flaw and we could see the Night King revive the dead within Winterfell's walls. Tormund Giantsbane also played a very big role in this episode, delivering not only great comedic value in his scenes, but also a very touching moment, saying that he would knight Brienne if he were king. Of course, he's implying that he wants to be with her sexually, but Jaime notices that there is also sincerity behind these words. The scenes Tormund have with Jaime are very interesting, especially the one-sided drinking contest and the story of why his last name is Giantsbane, which was absolutely hilarious, but also builds towards one of the absolute best moments of the series, with Jaime giving Brienne the honor she's dreamed of her entire life. I won't lie, when I watched this scene I cried, and as I've rewatched the scene numerous times, I've cried again, yes, I'm a big baby, to see Brienne smile so genuinely was a great treat and something that we may not see again until the very last episode of the series. Jaime Lannister, a man without honor, bestowing a knighthood to Brienne, one of the most honorable people of the series, that's beautiful. That was cinematic perfection. It's almost as if Jaime sees himself in Brienne not the Kingslayer, not the man without honor, but a true knight of the Seven Kingdom. Brienne and Jaime have shared two of my favorite scenes together, including the bath scene in Harrenhal, and they care deeply about each other's well-being and understand each other's truth, something which can be very difficult to figure out in this incredibly dangerous world. But this brings me to the scene when Jaime Lannister gets Oathkeeper from Tywin. When Jaime tells Tywin no that he's not leaving the Kingsguard, Tywin tells him that a man with no family and one hand needs all the help he can get. Which actually mirrors the scene we got with Jon's final decision on Jaime's fate in the trial. He said we need all the help we can get. I think that in this moment Jaime knew that he was helping someone else, and even while him and Tyrion feel out of place in Winterfell, which isn't their home, the people surrounding them felt like their family. That's what this episode was about, family, trust, honor, redemption, and truth, just like the scene we got with Arya and Sandor, where Sandor scolds her, but he gives her wine, Beric shows up, and they all connect and have a conversation. Sansa has a bowl of soup with Theon, and in so many other scenes, people share these moments where they understand that they can all suffer the same fate. Which is why I was blown away by the inclusion of Jenny's song sang by Podrick Payne in this episode. The song Podrick sings has a clever reference to the A Song of Ice and Fire book series, which Game of Thrones is based on, and a nod to a prophecy that may come to fruition in episode 3. High in the halls of kings who are gone, Jenny would dance with her ghosts. This could be a reference that the dead will rise within Winterfell, completely destroying their plan to defend the castle. But this isn't the main reason why it's important. There are so many other reasons as well, including Jenny's romance with Sir Duncan the Tall, the prince that was promised prophecy, and the tragedy at Summerhall. This deserves a properly hyped video, so tomorrow you will see a breakdown of why this song is so important and what it foreshadows for the rest of Season 8. But when Podrick sings this song while all of them are waiting for the dead to arrive at Winterfell, this is likely the last time we see the majority of these characters together. This fellowship that we've grown to love, and for some, the last night that they will ever be alive. This episode was so jam-packed with so many great moments and truly was one of the best episodes of Game of Thrones of all time. I will be doing a second breakdown of this episode, touching on the things that I didn't discuss at length in this video on the weekend. But what did you think of the episode? Did it meet your expectations? Was it one of your favorite episodes? And what were your favorite moments of the episode? Let me know all of your thoughts, your theories, and tinfoil in the comment section.
If you want to see more Game of Thrones videos, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified for upcoming videos on my channel. Like I said, I will be dropping a video on Jenny's song tomorrow, and I will also be doing a video on Daenerys and Arya this week as well. Of course, a big thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. I love all of you. The Super Pack is awesome. Thank you for spreading the hype like wildfire, and all the linky goodness to my Twitter, Patreon, and more is in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video. Hype and love.